Good morning, folks. We've got weather, a landslide, strong moves in science, first light for speculoos, and some space weather climate connections. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star not quite as quiet as a quitter just yet. Departing group in a new point active region began snapping the last 12 hours or so, and while the snapping is releasing tiny nudges to the X-ray flux, still don't have any significant solar flare activity from them. Looking next to the solar wind, we are in the plateau of the coronal hole solar wind stream here, stream intensity riding a modest peak, which combines with the relative stability of the plateau to leave geomagnetic conditions calm and quiet. We are still waiting the phi angle shift as right now the fields are pointing from Earth right back to the sun, shift expected soon, along with an increased magnitude risk at the lithosphere as Earth still has time remaining on its magnetic connection to this opening. Let's go to the weather. Hard to imagine you haven't heard about the major winter event cutting across the southern states. This is GO-16's view of the system that dropped ice and sleet and snow as far south as Georgia seen there, but also had the rain aspect on the warmer southeast side of the system when it crossed Houston, pretty much inundated the whole place. Cars abandoned across the region. Quick notes as well in the UK where lightning preceded the onset of very heavy rain and hail in Somerset. Also hearing word of a deadly landslide that combined torrential rain and failure to meet building codes in Indonesia. Let's go to the science. First up, going back across the pond to find the UK and Ireland pushing forward on the geomagnetic risk studies. While not quite as vulnerable as Sweden and Norway, the UK and indeed much of Europe is at disadvantage geomagnetic latitudes just like New Zealand, and it is critical they catch up to the US in terms of full-scale electric field variability studies. Folks, there's a new eye on the sky and its name is Speculus. Like many of the ESO scopes, it sits high in the desert with terrific views of the heavens nearly unencumbered by clouds and other light pollution. Some of its initial shots are gorgeous, Others want to raise questions as well as eyebrows, like we're not going to notice the right angle kink instability in what was once collimated plasma, the parallel block rectangles over to the side, or the concentric circle rings surrounding nothing in particular right above them. Up next, folks, the coal in the stocking for dark matter has indeed been formally published here. This Xmas data you heard about via the preprint archive a few days ago, but it is always good to see them formally make the science register. And last but not least, two studies on nearly the exact same magnetospheric power input from the solar wind and their effects. The tracking via polar geomagnetic index and aiding to add energy that integrates with the Earth not only through the auroral region but through lower latitude L shells and direct excitation of the ionosphere, regardless of which layer or which fields a given particle may take. Either the polar fields are going to drive them right down towards the ground or they will integrate with the global electric circuit and play a significant role in cloud nucleation, ambient ionization, pressure, temperature, and precipitation. Folks, last night we posted the 15 critical minutes from Dr. Robitaille that should lead one to discard the model of the gaseous sun. Check it out. Link is below. We've got your wind maps, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.05 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.